Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Ancash in Peru. Ancash, as you can see, is along the Pacific Ocean. It has a long coastline. You can even see the um, Trans American Highway going through there. But it's not like a coastal kind of place. Like, um, you wouldn't think of this as more of a coastal region. When you hear Ancash, you think of the mountains. It is an incredibly mountainous region, all up in here. There are quite a few prominent mountain ranges in Ancash, but the two most important are the, uh, the Blanca, Cordillera Blanca, and the Cordillera Negro. So the White Mountains and the Black Mountains. Which black mountains because they actually are quite black. They're made of very dark rock. And the Blanca, the white, because they're snow covered. And in the middle is this beautiful, beautiful valley where we can find the capital city of Huaraz. Really interesting place. Apparently very big with tourists who come to climb these mountains. Cordillera Blanca. Obviously all part of the Andes, by the way, but this is an important stretch of mountains here because it is covered in glaciers, one of the um, most tropical glaciers. That made no sense. The glaciers closest to the tropics, I should say. One of the closest glaciers to the tropics in the whole world. Not to mention, the tallest mountain in Peru is here, Mount Huascaran. And it's the second highest mountain in all of the Americas. Pretty remarkable. This region, as you can imagine, also has lots and lots of indigenous ethnic history as well. And you think, of course, like the Incas, right? Obviously. But there is a culture that lived here a lot, lot older than that. Way older than the Incas. But let's talk about this region a little bit more first as we go over the UNESCO World Heritage Sites that are in this little region here in Ancash. There are three of them. Starting off with the National Park itself, the... Oh dear, I'm at a bad angle. The Huascaran National Park. I wonder if I'm going to have to move this a little bit. The Huascaran National Park. There we go. <laughs> Doing my best. Situated in the Cordillera Blanca, the world's highest tropical mountain range, that's what I was trying to say, Mount Huascaran rises to 6,768 meters above sea level deep ravines watered by numerous torrents, the glacial lakes, and the variety of the vegetation make it a site of spectacular beauty. It is the home to such species as the spectacled bear and the Andean condor. Now I gotta show you, hopefully, oh there's no pictures. I'll show you on Google Earth and one of the amazing, amazing plants that only grows in this national park. So you can see all the glacial lakes here. We'll look at lots of pictures of it on Google Earth. But let's talk more about this indigenous culture, the Chavi. The archaeological site of Chavin gave its name to the culture that developed between 1500 and 300 BCE in this high valley of the Peruvian Andes. This former place of worship is one of the earliest and best known pre-Columbian sites. Its appearance is striking with the complex of terraces and squares surrounded by structures of depressed stone and mainly zoomorphic ornamentation. 
this has oh there's no pictures here of the <laughs> um the Chavin de Hontar it's called. But we'll look at pictures on Google Earth of it. <laughs> See if there's any pictures of this last one. This last site just got added a couple of years ago, I think last year to be honest. The Chunkilo Archaeoastronomical Complex. Let's read about the Chunkilo Archaeoastronomical Complex is a prehistoric site located on the north central coast of Peru in the Cosma Valley, comprising a set of constructions in a desert landscape that, together with natural features, functioned as a calendrical instrument, using the sun to define dates throughout the year. The site includes a triple walled hilltop complex, known as the Fortified Temple two building complexes called Observatory and Administrative Center, a line of thirteen cuboidal towers stretching along the ridge of a hill, and the Cerro Mucho Malo that complements the thirteen towers as a natural marker. The ceremonial center was probably dedicated to a solar cult, and the presence of an observation point on either side of the north-south line of the thirteen towers allows the observation both of the solar rising and setting points throughout the whole year. The site shows great innovation by using the solar cycle and an artificial horizon to mark the solstices, the equinoxes, and every other date within the year with a precision of one to two days. It is thus a testimony of the culmination a long historical evolution of astronomical practices in the Cosma Valley. So here you can see this hill with the 13 stones and once a month the sun would set behind one of these stones so that they would know what day it was on the calendar. Isn't that remarkable? And there's lots of little buildings around it too upon this hill. Very, very cool, I think. So that is more up in here. There's a big um, glacial, whoops, wrong region, up in here. <laughs> there's a big glacial river that flows down to here and um, is pretty much like the only real farming region of Ancash. But this is it. There we go. But um, that is located up more in the, the northern parts there of the valley. So yes, the Chavin culture um, It's about right here is where Chavin de Huantar is located, which was their sacred site. It was their big temple. I want to say like Machu Picchu because we believe Machu Picchu was really only used for ceremonies and things. It would have been like that. It was a important place to come to during certain times of the year when they had holidays or rituals or things to accomplish. But we don't know much more about the Chafin other than what few things they've left behind, including that incredible archaeoastronomical site. I like that. Well, you know why I'm off? Why I'm pointing at the wrong things? Because I have to adjust this camera back up, as you can see. <laughs> My goodness, I hope you can see. I was pointing more up here. Anyway. The Chavin would come and go. I think it was one of those cultures that we're not quite sure what exactly happened to them, but most likely they just kind of got absorbed into other cultures and there were many, many other different cultures that would have lived here. Possibly the Tiwanaku and the Wari peoples definitely lived here, but they would eventually become absorbed into the Inca Empire, right? The Spanish would arrive here in the early 1500s looking for silver and quickly take over this region, make it part of... Um, New Spain, I think the, the area was called. Eventually it just become Peru. But uh, this region wasn't nearly as important to the Spanish as other parts of Peru that actually had all the silver in it that they were looking for. A couple of 
couple of little military things of importance happened here. I didn't write down what town it was, but it's somewhere in the valley here that Simone Bolivar uh, lived in and plotted out the liberation of Peru. And, and right here you can see this town called Yungay. Um, there's a big battle here when um, Peru and Bolivia, back when they were one country, fought against Chile. And Chile won the battle. There's so many different wars in South America uh, between, you know, all the countries becoming independent in like the 1930s, 1940s. It's, it's hard to keep track of them all. So when I saw there's a war here, I was like, of course there was. <laughs> of course there was a big battle here. So Yeah, there, it was all over territory. All of the wars were over who got to draw lines where. But probably the biggest event to happen here recently was in 1970. A huge earthquake struck this region. I want to say it was like a 7.3. This region's notorious for massive earthquakes. Many, many, many peoples lost their lives in this earthquake, mainly in this valley here due to landslides coming in from the big mountains on both sides. In some cases, destroying whole entire towns, burying them in rock and snow. It's a very devastating time, but the state has built itself back up. And it's now mainly just a little farming region and a big tourist region, like I said, for people who like to climb mountains and people who come to see the archaeological site. And I believe that's about it. I always leave something out. I'm trying to think of what I could have left out. I know I must have left something out. I'm not sure. <laughs> I always forget to say something. And I, I only remember after I stop recording. <laughs> but let's check out Google Earth. Maybe I'll remember it. Because there's so much history in this area. I have to have forgotten something. Right. Oh dear, it has to refresh. There we go we go. All right, well, let's pull up the cache so we can see exactly where we are in the world. Let me zoom out a bit in case you're not quite sure where Peru is located. Oops, we don't want to be sideways here. Here is South America. There's big old Brazil there. We're here along the Pacific coast. And here's Peru. There's Ancash. So you can see that, you know, Peru does have big stretches of kind of desert-y regions and rocky regions. And we're more in the, the mountain region than the more dry desert-y region. And you can see the Cordillera Blancas here, all covered in snow. Here's the Cordillera Negro. Then right in the middle is this big valley. So let's start off by looking at Juarez. Look at these beautiful pictures. Oh, it looks so relaxing. I bet it's freezing in these glacial lakes. Oh, but they are stunning, aren't they? Beautiful Spanish architecture here in the town. Up from above, and you can see all the mountains in the background. Beautiful churches, beautiful waterfalls in the natural landscape. there. Big rivers rushing down from these snowy, snowy mountains. Anyway, there's the capital. It's pretty much where if you want to come mountain climbing in this region, you come here. You can see from above all the little glacial lakes in there. It's really something. Let's take a look at Actually, let's look at this first. The slideshow for the Huascaran National Park. So we can see all the beautiful mountains and the glacial lakes and the glaciers and all the mumus up there. And let's see if there's a picture of the plants. There's one. Um, they're known as the Queen of the Andes. They are these um, big old, they kind of look like, almost like a cactus. 
but they grow for about a hundred years as a big old bushy bush. And, uh, hello puppy. <laughs> it's a sweet German shepherd that lives downstairs. She loves to bark. Um, these plants, you know, I might just pull up a picture. Or, you know, I might just pull up that one picture we saw. That's not a bad picture. They're usually a lot more bushy. This one's been trimmed back. Um, they grow for almost a hundred years, and then they grow these massive stalks overnight. They can grow to be like ten feet tall. And they're covered in flowers to send out all of the, the pollen to grow more plants. And they only grow at certain altitudes on this mountain range. It's the only place you'll find them. Isn't that fascinating? I was reading they tried to take one to Berkeley and it died after 30 years. It's very sad. But here we have the Big Mountain. And if you think, well, that's not very impressive. I guess we have to look at this slideshow a bit. Mount Huascaran, the highest point in Peru and the second highest point in the Americas. Big old snowy, snowy mountain. It's very, very beautiful, isn't it? All covered in glaciers and snow. It's slowly, slowly dripping into the beautiful little lakes and rivers. People do still live up here. They even incorporate those, um, the big stalks of those plants into their buildings. Look at this big happy cow up there who's so up high. Lots of tourists coming to see the beautiful lakes here. There you can see covered in flowers. And climbing up this very treacherous mountain. Very cool. So yes, the Cordillera Blanca. And if we shift our focus, you can see the Cordillera Negro, not as, you know, dominating the landscape, but still very, very beautiful mountains, isn't it? Let's see if we can find a little point. Oh, there's an archaeological site here. There's no pictures there, though. That's too bad. We need a mirador. There's a laguna. So yes, as you can see, black mountains, right? Much darker compared to the bright white mountains, the white snowy mountains across the valley. The little lagoon here. And not as like majestically impressive as the glacial lakes, right? But still very lovely. So let's head down. You can see the coastline over here. Again, as you can see, not very beachy, very dry, you know. Getting those cold Pacific winds hitting the mountains here and not leaving much there for vegetation and things. But does draw in a lot of fish. So here we can see Chavin de Juantar. There's a museum here. Let's check that out. Wow. Some pretty art, we know from what they've left behind, which there's quite a bit that they've left behind in this site in particular. Definitely lots of incredible ceremonial things, little jars and pans there. There's the site from way up. You can see all that we've managed to dig out and recover. That's pretty. Let's take a look at the site itself. Let's see. You can see we're up high in the mountains here. We gotta find the actual site. The, the town's called Chavinto Juntar as well. But let's see. 
little temples here. Yeah, this is the town. But that's at the site. Let's see, I know there's a couple of sites. We want to find the big one. Oops, blurry. Let's just type it in. Chagin de Hontar. I see the museum's popped up. It's just going to give us the town. Let's see. Sito Archeologico. There it is. <laughs> we found it. There's a big plaza. Lots of sites you can see are all covered up to keep them safe while we explore them. And um, let's take a look. This is what I wanted to show you. It's so remarkable. Just imagine how thriving and important this place once was. Probably covered with people. There's so many cool tunnels here in the big temple. Little carvings there on that rock. How fascinating is that? I wonder if the town sprang up around the archaeological site, or if the town was there and they just happened to find the site, but I kind of have the feeling that people have always just lived in this little section of the valley. One of the big, big tourist draws of Peru. Look at how striking this valley is. The little rivers. It's such a beautiful landscape here. And it just must be absolutely covered in history. These big winding roads going up over these huge mountains. Let's take a look at this little pocket here. In this lake. Morococha. The pictures. Oh, how pretty. I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. Next, we're going to a big one. We're heading over to Spain. So, you're going to see some of the, the things they made out of the minerals they took out of Peru in their colonies. So, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a good 